Garage Series. My name is Jeremy Chapman. And I'm Michael Tandor. So today we have a special show in store. We're going to talk about one of the new features for Office 365 and self-service BI. That's right. So we're going to take a look at a very exciting new service called Power BI for Office 365. So whether you're an IT pro or a small business or even a student, you won't want to miss today's show. But before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia question. What is the name of the feature that does natural language query as part of the Power BI service? Is it A, Power Query, B, Power Pivot, C, Power View, or D, Q&A? So stay tuned for the answer at the end of the show. So Michael, we talk a lot about self-service business intelligence or BI, what is it? Well, self-service business intelligence is essentially what we're doing to empower end users to be able to access and analyze information for themselves. Right, so when I was in IT, we had corporate managed data the IT department was really in control of everything from the database itself, the queries, the reports, all of that. So it looked kind of like this. Basically, I'd have my, my database, and it could be SQL or other types of database databases. I might have a, a model or some type of a reporting uh, layer in between that. And then I'd have my dashboard that I'd create for my marketing or operations or other teams, maybe on a weekly or a monthly basis. And basically, any time I wanted to have any change, I'd have to put in a request or a query into the database guys, and you know, we'd always have this cycle of communication before I got the data I wanted. How does that change in self-service BI? Yeah, so this is classic, right? So, um, and the challenge is that the majority of the IT project is about getting the data right, and then your end users are going to have these one-off requests. And the challenge is how do you enable your end users to be able to create their own reports without having to call down to IT and disrupt sort of other projects that are underway. So what we've done is, uh, of course, we've got this whole stack here. And do I actually get a color preference? Can we switch to another color? Yeah, let's, why don't we switch you to green? Green is perfect, actually, for this. So what we've done is we've built a lot of uh, capabilities for end users right into Excel. And Excel is that tool where end users just love to play with data, right? Right, so it's a lot easier to use. Everybody's familiar with it. That's right. So now what I can do is from Excel, I can connect through to the sources of data that IT is setting up for me. Mm -hmm. And I can uh, connect, I can analyze that data, and uh, we've got great new capabilities built into Excel that leverage in-memory technology. So I can now crunch hundreds of millions of rows in data in split-second times. But IT is still in control in terms of what gets published to be accessed via Excel, right? That's right, exactly. And then, you know, once I've, I've got that IT sanctioned data in, inside of Excel, I also can, you know, visualize that in new ways. And we have great new visualizations with Power View and with the new Power Map technology right. to really explore this data in 3D, uh, and a very interactive way. We've shown a lot of GeoFlow, as we called it in the in the earlier days, and power map technology on the garage. So very cool stuff to visualize data. That's right. GeoFlow is now now named Power Map officially. Right. Um, and then what we've done is, you know, we're really aiming to make BI a lot easier uh, and taking a lot of friction out of deploying BI across the organization. And we've introduced a new service for Office 365 called Power BI for Office 365. And what this allows me to do is once I've created my, uh, ex my Excel models uh, and, my, and my reports, I can publish them into a very collaborative environment. And I've got a turnkey BI uh, environment here in Office 365 where I can share both the reports and maybe the data sets that I've created in here. Mm -hmm. I can then connect because it's all cloud-based. I can connect from any mobile device uh, and consume those um, either through the browser in HTML5 or in these new custom apps that we have, and you can actually explore uh, a, a series of different reports. Uh, and also, we've got new ways to 
uh, to uh, experience the data as well. So we've got this new Q&A feature, which is built into the Power BI sites in, in, uh, in the cloud. And that allows me to just type, and then the system understands the semantics of what I'm typing, and it'll actually generate answers in the form of charts and graphs for me. Right, so it's kind of like Bing for data then. Exactly, yes. And in fact, the Q&A uh, functionality was a, um, an effort with Bing and Microsoft Research to really bring a lot of different technologies uh, together, do a lot of tech transfer, and enable um, a new way of really simplifying. Substance. Right, and if I'm a small business and so maybe I don't have larger databases like I've kind of drawn out here, but maybe there are spreadsheets or point of sales systems, those types of things, I can still query through that, right, and actually hit I think uh, external data that's published through the data catalog. That's right. Actually, we've implemented uh, a really interesting way to for IT to provision data sort of in this environment. So if I'm a if I'm a small medium business, I might connect directly to uh, the sources and create my models here. Uh, if I'm IT, I have a different problem uh, in an enterprise. In an enterprise situation, I have there I've got multiple different data sources available. I just want to make it easier for end users to really discover that data. So part of the system as well is data search. It's something we've called the data catalog. And I can now enable data search across my organization. So I can mm -hmm. now just type uh, a search query inside of Excel and I'll see all the data sources that are available to me. To your point, we're also managing a public version of this. And with this, we've got lots of partners like Dun and, Dun, uh, Dun and Bradstreet, uh, as well as uh, we're indexing uh, data such as uh, from Wikipedia. There's lots of data sources out there, the data.gov initiative. So now it's much easier to discover and bring this data inside Excel as well. Very cool. So this is all great theory, but let's have a look at this in practice and do a couple of demos. Sounds great. So Michael, we want to take a look at a demonstration and I'm going to play the part of a bar owner because I know we've got a bunch of data that we've published out and people vlogged about it, uh, about you know, how we can measure data inside of a bar to really have some insights into what drinks are sold and, and all of the um, you know, profitability, sales by week, all those types of things. So let's take a look. That's right. So a little history behind this demo. Um, so we actually have a member of the team whose, uh, whose brother owns a bar and uh, so we d built this all uh, real data, and uh, we're going to analyze it right now. Right. So uh, at the PPI, uh, what I mentioned was we had this ability uh, to find data and, uh, and actually discover it in new ways. So I'm going to show you Power Query. And in Power Query, there's a feature where you can actually do data search. So here I'm just going to search for the Seattle sort of businesses. And what I get back is from our public data catalog, I get back all the information around businesses in the Seattle area. So mm -hmm. here we can see Dun & Bradstreet uh, comes back and I can see when this was last published. Or data from Wikipedia. Uh, so another data source here and we see all that data here. Um, oh, wow. Now what I want to do because of the, the specifics of this particular demo is um, with Power Query, we actually have the ability to connect through to any number of different flat files. I can pull those data in. Mm -hmm. I can actually uh, connect to databases like Oracle, IBM, Teradata, whatever those happens to happen to be, or even some more modern data sources like, um, you know, if, if I'm doing big data, I can connect to Hadoop, or maybe I can connect to Facebook, and I want to pull in some information for a marketing campaign or something along those lines. So right, but I'm a bar owner, so I'm keeping a lot of my data on Excel spreadsheets, so I want to be able to get insights from those. And that's exactly what we did uh, at this particular bar. So the interesting thing is that uh, at this particular bar, the way that they track inventory is that they have a vendor who comes in once a week, and that mm -hmm. vendor brings in a, a series of different scales. And they'll measure each of the bottles of alcohol. And depending on the weight of the bottle, the viscosity of the liquid inside, they can figure out how many ounces are left in those bottles. And then okay. to your point, what they do is they actually track uh, all those sort of inventory levels in an Excel spreadsheet. Right. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to connect through to the point of sale system and also combine that with our inventory levels and then we could uh, start to analyze uh, a number of different things. And so you're saying I can do that? You can absolutely do Very that. Very cool. Yeah. So we connect you to the point of sale system um, the, directly using that, uh, that connection to the database. And then when we wanted to connect through to the, uh, the Excel flat files, this is how we did it. So we uh, have this ability to connect from folder. Right? Mm -hmm. And from folder allows me to point to a folder on my desktop. And for this particular bar owner, essentially, he kept all his Excel files in this folder. So we just pointed to the folder. And with Power Query, it recognizes all the data that's available in all those three different files that you see here. And then you can right. click 
And by clicking that, it brings all the data together, and then you can start to massage that data, right? So mm -hmm. I can clean it up. I can change the headers. Um, I can actually change the um, a number of different things. I could I could do, uh, you know split columns. I can remove duplicates. I can really clean this data up. I can change the type. So here we can see these numbers are text. Right. Change those over to number type, that type of thing. And all those steps are captured. So here we can see that I see all the different steps that I, I, I change the data. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just land that inside of Excel. And once it's inside of Excel, what we did was we just added it to the other data that we had. So here, you know, if you scroll down, see you can all see my favorite rum, alcohols, tequila, yeah. all the inventory mm -hmm. for the bar, right? Um, and then uh, easily we could just go uh, up into this Power Pivot uh, analytical modeling tool that we have built into Excel. And you can see through this diagram, there's our inventory data. And we've just joined it up with the rest of the data coming out of the point of sale system. And that's something that anybody could do, right? Um, yes, yeah. If you, it's as easy as building calculations inside of Excel. Right. So once I've done that, then what we wanted to do was start to analyze that visually, right? Yeah. So uh, we built a report, and here you can see the report that we have. And right away, you can see a couple different things. So at this particular bar, there's 139 different types of mm -hmm. alcohol, and also there's this gap. So there's about they're losing about five thousand uh, dollars. So month. why is the vodka bar so big? Well, the vodka bar shows that the majority of the losses are actually from vodka. Okay. And uh, you can actually see that the majority of the, of the losses apart from vodka, like the two biggest ones are Crown Roos and Stoli. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where essentially what we're seeing is from the point of sale system, I know how much I actually sold. From the inventory tracking, I actually know how much inventory I have left. Right. This is the gap in those. So oh, okay. I should have sold a lot more than I did. So get. that's why I'm losing money. That's right. So that's either spillage or breakage or whatever it happens to or be. Or bartenders being overly nice. Or bartenders being overly nice. Okay. So uh, when we actually discovered that the majority of our losses were coming from six bottles, mm -hmm. then the bar owner decided to actually change his business process. So okay. instead of uh, you know bringing in the vendor once a week to be able to do all that weighing and inventory checks, he actually bought his own scales mm -hmm. and started to do it on a daily basis. So He's like the measuring vigilante. That's right, that's right. And because he could, now he could just focus on the six bottles that were right. causing him the problems, right? Right, right, right. And when you do it on a daily basis, you know who was on staff. So you can start to draw these correlations and figure out where the problems might be and why so much loss is happening. Okay. So um, what we wanted to do, working with the bar owner, was actually change this behavior uh, and discover, you know, Based on uh, the issue of sort of overpouring, so a lot of bartenders overpour. Right. Um, how could we actually get them to be a little more precise in how much they put in each drink? Because we want them to do about one and a half ounces. So that's exactly what they said. They said about one and a half ounces is the perfect pour. Okay. So we created this KPI. We said, okay, 1.5 ounces is what every bartender on average should be pouring. Mm -hmm. And then the bar owner decided to do a special promotion. So the bartender that would hit the perfect pour average would be sent to Hawaii. So it was right. this, this sort of promotional campaign nice. that, that he did. Um, so we created a specific report for them to be able to track how the average pour of each bartender is doing. So I'll show you that report here. All right, so now what we want to do is create a report so we can actually track the average pours for the different bartenders. And here you can see we've got uh, two different bartenders. We've got Amir and we've got Michael. And we can actually track their behavior over time. So you can see how Amir started very high on his average pour, about 1.7. And then he overcorrected and he ended up around 1.2 on an average pour. Now that's a problem uh, because that could create some customer sat issues. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got the other bartender, Michael, who actually ended up uh, hitting that perfect bar, uh, that, that <laughs> the perfect bar. He's he very competitive. Hit ounces. Yeah. yeah. So he was able to uh, to focus and actually pour the perfect ounce. So right. he, so at the end, we were able to change behavior through this promotion and save the bar a lot of money. Very cool. Now the next challenge is well, how do I, as an employee of this bar, track how I'm doing in the contest? Mm -hmm. And what we did was we actually now are able to publish this into Power BI for Office 365. And now each of the employees can actually access this report and see how they're doing. And that data is live, so they know exactly up to the day you know, how well they're doing. For and that might have been Michael's this. trick to be so competitive as well. That's right. He's probably tracking and, and seeing how well he's doing. So now what we see here is the new Power BI for Office 365 environment. So right. I've got a number of different reports. These reports are, are live. They're live tiles. The data is coming from the on-premise data uh, source. 
Uh, I could open those up. I can share those with uh, other individuals. Uh, I also have this new feature, uh, which is called the, the Q&A feature, right? Mm -hmm. so let me show you how this works. So as I type, um, the system will understand the semantics of what I type and then generate uh, different answers. So for right. example, in your bar, if you want to uh, understand uh, what sales looks like, I can just type sales uh, and I can see overall sales or I can type and I can get uh, sort of uh, my inventory list if I want. I can see all the things that I have in and it inventory. It just populates immediately. Yeah. It just comes right back. Uh, maybe going back to sales, maybe I want to see sales uh, by month. By month, and okay. And I've got it broken down. Makes sense. Or maybe sales uh, by week. Yep, I want to see sales by week. Or right. weekday, right? Yep, yep, yep. And then uh, what you can see here is a really interesting Sunday turned out to be actually one of the better days in the bar. And that was counterintuitive to me. So I, I asked them, well, why Sunday? And they said, well, because we have sports games and people come. That makes sense. Yeah. So uh, also I can look at uh, sort of the brand names that I have on hand. So mm -hmm. there's all the different the Crown Rouge, Bud Light. I can take a look at the profit for each of those. So we can see Bud Light is by far our most profitable right. uh, alcohol in the bar versus say Crown Roost, which is about half as profitable. And then if I want to take a look at how much, um, you know. I've always wanted to know if beer or vodka was more profitable. Well, uh, you can actually take a look at, you know, beer or vodka in terms of, you know, how much inventory I have on hand here. So I can actually see side by side. And the interesting thing with this is that the system actually understands uh, the semantics of words like versus, right? And yes. it'll present the data in the best sort of uh, graphical uh, way that it thinks is best for whatever semantics you've typed. So it's actually very clever uh, the way the system does it. Wow. And in addition to all that Q&A stuff, we can also use devices like this, right? Because I know there's a mobile story around. That's right. So all those reports that we have published into the Power BI for Office 365 mm -hmm. environment are now accessible Okay. Uh, right there in the mobile app that so we have. So I've got my mobile app and I can just drill into these reports uh, using the local compute power and, and a, a view into those so I can see sales by day here, for example. All very easily right from my, right from my um, surface in this case. That's right, and those are all live, so you're looking at the sales by day um, live data right there on your mobile device. Super cool. So all this great stuff around you know, Q&A, big, huge uh, differentiator in terms of how we can get to data you know, versus the past where we had to be DBAs to be able to make the queries happen. All the visualization and cool stuff we're doing around Power Map. Very nice stuff. Uh, so before we close out on this show, let's have a look at today's trivia question. What is the name of the feature that does natural language query as part of the Power BI service? So, of course, the answer to the trivia question was D, Q&A. That's right. We thought we'd tr uh, trick a few people with power query as a possible answer. Yes, that's right. But no, Q&A is the, uh, the right one. So we've covered a lot of ground in terms of uh, this show. We've talked about how you can use Excel, really familiar tools, to both discover as well as analyze and visualize all of your data very quickly and very easily. That's right. And then that ability to actually uh, share those files that you've created in the new Power BI for Office 365 service so that you can share those with other individuals, you can consume those on the, your mobile devices, and this new Q&A feature which allows me to now just type and the system will understand the semantics of what I'm typing and present me with charts and graphs. Extremely cool stuff. So it's really democratizing BI for even small businesses all the way up to the enterprise. So all of this content and more can be found at microsoft.com garage. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.